But the quality has de- uh, degenerated over the years. That's what they say, no? As the as purest food. Yeah. Earlier it was made with uh, toddy and things yes, like that. Yes. So. And rounded. We we walked through Sonia's works. So like I mean, Sonia's already spoken about her works even in the talk that we had. But uh, you know we have. Like Sonia explained, the pink pink of the green is amplified in the background, and the fact that you know you have words in this artwork is also to denote that this green knows no classification. It's available to everybody in you know in the in the in the pyramid of classes, yeah. And then you have the the bowl, you have the lady, the serenity. That I also see in a lot of your older works, you know, the serenity. I think of you as a person also passes on to the artwork, and it really does. Uh, you have, you don't have a very forceful gait. It's a gait that I think is more giving, like you know, mothers and grandmothers and women in general are soft. Yeah. So I think that also is translated into these figures that I see in these artworks here. Uh, we move to the zan. The zan, for those of you who don't know, is how many of you all know what ambil is or satwa is? So in Roman Catholic families, we call it dizan, which is nachni flour that's cooked in milk and uh, jaggery and salt, a little bit of salt. So this helps bone health, okay? And I'm sure that a lot of our parents have pushed <laughs> spoon, yeah, like, you know, dizan down our throats. And I think what Sonia, I mean, this is how I interpret this artwork also, is that you carry these traditions of, you know, cooking with you, or forms of food with you that you also pass on to your family. <laughs> so this is what happens. You know, you not just you don't just carry tangible items with you, like you know, food and grains and everything. You carry your customs wherever you go. You carry your traditions wherever you go. And then we have my children. Again, Bhaiyoga translates to well water, and uh, like Sonia also explained, uh, these rituals of going to the community well and coming back with you know more cause of water, and then like, when she was a little child, she would play in the chikor or like go fishing in these ponds and fields nearby in Russia, and on their way back home, they were thrusted <laughs> with the force of water. I mean, of course, well water. So memories, all of these things, they don't leave you. You know, the pacificity of knowing that you carry home within you through all of these, you know, memories and narratives and stories that you just want to like, you know, carry with you and also tell your uh, 
the future gen. These two works here again come from a very personal narrative for the artist, uh, for Sonia. And I remember also discussing this with Sonia. So like a personal thing that happened in her studio, okay. So I was talking to Sonia about how prayers, you know, you carry company prayers also with you. You carry your prayers with you. You carry your language with you. And I learned the night prayer, the Deobari Raat, when I didn't even understand the language. I was taught to say particular words in a particular into intonation, pronunciation, everything was checked by my parents, but I never understood what it meant. Now that I understand what it means, it just, it just like, you know, fills me up so much. And I'm just very grateful that I know this language and it just makes me feel instantaneously connected to somebody who also speaks the language. Uh, with prayers again, uh, Goan Catholic households have, say the rosary in unison every evening, you know. And uh, I mean, I, I'm not a big fan of prayers, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but the only part that I enjoy a lot is like, you know, at the end of the prayers, the kids join their hands and go to all the elders in the family. There are two phrases that I remember. One is, God lays out which means become big and not just physically, you know, just become a bigger, better person and the uh, very good, which is God bless you. So, I, you know, even till date when my nephew comes to ask me for blessings, now I've become the elder one, uh, I say these, these phrases to them in company and I think, I say it with a lot of pride. So it's not just like God bless you. And they don't understand company, but I will still say it in company to them. They used to give us company. After this. <laughs> After blessing. After blessing. Yes. These artworks here are by Shiva Buddha. Now what I ask you to do is look at everything very closely. Like go through all of the artworks. So the beauty of this artist is that he's able to, you know, put several simultaneous narratives into one visual. And the thought behind that is that you carry places and faces with you no matter where you go. Like if I originally call you and ask you to tell me the next meeting in Gujarat, you'll be able to do that. You'll be able to tell me no matter where I'm in the world. And if I also tell you about, you know, okay, remember this guy, you remember our neighbor, you'll picture his face, you'll know that by heart. So you carry faces and places with you no matter where you go. So you carry home here. And you can't, and, and at that level, you know, I think that's the asset you're talking about. Like, this asset, nobody can take it away. Nobody can take it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, we look at these sculptures and we look at this huge painting here. So, this 28 foot painting and the sculptures supplement each other. So, every Goan village, okay, this is an understatement, has one drunkard for sure. <laughs> right. I think families also, I should say. <laughs> but uh, this is literally the four corners of a tavern that open up into a canvas. So look at how people are so overconfident, robust, colorful, almost bordering on animalistic, you know. So this is what a Goan tavern looks like. So Virat sir also spoke about how he would, you know, sip a beer, say, in Vienna, wherever in the world. But, you know, when you sip a beer, you want to sit in Goa. You want to sit at a bar in Goa or at the beach in Goa. So this is what inspired this work as well. Now, like Viratsa said, you know, the last, the latter part of it on my left was when we got it first, we installed it in the exhibition. Was, uh, it was, I mean, we primed it and everything. It's a WIP, it's a work in progress. So the idea of bringing the studio of the artist into the exhibition space was to get the viewer to be a part of that process, you know, to see an artist render Goan motifs on the canvas. And uh, so this is uh, an effort of three weeks, three, four weeks. So you're going to see it, you know, change, shape shift, even during the entire process of the uh, exhibition. This artwork here, the set of artworks, uh, is it's a homage to the Goan Theatre. So the Goan Theatre was actually, was born in, in Bombay 135 years ago. So it's literally a gift of the diaspora. You know, and then brought to Goa now. 
And now, I mean, it's like, it's all, it's world over now. Everyone celebrates this brilliance that we call Gold Yatra. But understanding, understanding, translating, that is yeah, still an issue. Is, yeah, but we'll get there. I think we'll get there. It's very complex, no? You, you wink and you lost the joke, yeah, so. that's true. Very political, yeah. satirical. And at different layers, so. And different layers too. Have you ever seen a Gold Yatra? Have you seen a Gold you can enjoy it. You can enjoy it without understanding a word, just from from the responses. But that's not there. There's a yeah. yeah. Anyway, we move to the last set of words. So here we have Sagar Pune. Now he's worked on this sculpture and three other works and we had the Rakanda which we just got into the store because we've officially closed the show. But uh, at a point in time, at by the village in uh, Ponda, make, like you know the entire community was involved in making these boats. So in a way this entire activity fueled an ecosystem, you know, raised families and like you know, kept the village together. So you see how it seeps in through, you know, the bodies of people, like the earnings. Or, this, or these laborious works seep into the bodies of the workers and then their families and then the entire village. So it's like a treasure trove of memories that was fueled by one commercial uh, system. How many of you all know about Makarache Kazar? Really? It's there in all Indian languages in some word yeah, or the but other. What no? we call it in other languages? I wouldn't know. The, Mon the marriage of the horses and the marriage of the donkeys. Monkeys only, you know? Monkeys. Monkeys wearing only. When it rains and sun shines at the same time. Yeah. 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 Donkeys. donkeys. Yeah. So, yeah, so basically, come closer. When the sun is out and it's, it's raining, okay, yeah. this phenomena is called Makaracha Kazar in Kokkiri. And this young artist here was like, what the hell is Makaracha Kazar? He literally thought that there were two monkeys in the jungle getting married. <laughs> but so that's he, what you're supposed to think. Yeah. So this, I mean, yeah, but he didn't know it was, you know, the sun and okay. the rain at that point in time. So he carries these jokes with him. He carries these, you know, little anecdotes with him wherever he goes. Again, what he's used here is red soil from his village as well. And you also see Kavi art elements that he's incorporated into the work. So Kavi art usually happens, it's a wall mural sort of work, sort of an artwork. But his idea of incorporating them here is to also promote, you know, these, these forms of art. Uh, again, you know, wherever we are in the world, we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate Eid, we celebrate Diwali, we celebrate our festivals, right? So this artwork is about celebrating Ganesh Chaturthi, no matter. He was in Hyderabad for the longest time and he told me about how he celebrated the Ganesh festival over there and he told me about his memories of how you know, he would be involved in decorating the entire pandal in his village. So that's what you see here in the artwork. Uh, if you meet this artist, he is a literal embodiment of his village. So you see the silhouette of the artist here and you know the, the fields of Arpai, the roots of Arpai, you see the Arpai Jenny here. So you literally embody your village, your home and you carry your home wherever you are. So that's the entire idea of this exhibition. Also there was a Rakhandar which we just moved. So the idea of the Rakhandar is basically to... You know what a Rakhandar is? A village protector. Yeah, protector. At the village boundary, every village boundary has one. So he's a demon. Deutsar. It's hard to translate but concepts. They are good guys and there are bad guys. There are so. bad guys. But this bad guy has the, the, good res the responsibility yeah. of being the good guy. And uh, the idea is that they protect the village and its people and more of all people. So every village or every area in Goa has one Rakhanda. But what happens to those people who are out of that village, you know, in the diaspora? Who takes care of them, who protects them? So the idea of bringing the Rakhanda to the exhibition was to not only just protect this exhibition and look over it, but also protect those in the diaspora. So that's where we would end our conversation and then to this specially curated place. So, uh, Actually it's strange, no, how uh, Hindu concepts get uh, part of Christianity also. Yeah. Like Francis Xavier is supposed to be the Goenso Rakhno. Rakhno. Which uh, could actually come from this kind of belief, not correct. that someone is there to protect correct. you. Correct, correct. 
So cyclones don't happen here. <laughs> yeah. Or oh, few, few of so them we happen. We have this space where people can come after the exhibition, sit, relax, read books on going history, culture, food, architecture, everything under the sun. And then we've also have something, you know, that's a little tangible for people to come see experience. So Sonia has been kind enough to give us a few of her utensils that her great grandmom used to use. So we have those histories lying right here. Then we have the Bangar Haryatso. And they're real, okay? <laughs> and then we have the Kodu, we have Natne, we have the Paboy rice, we have Mircho, and we have the pot here. <coughs> Kiraite is really bitter, no? <coughs> really bitter. <coughs> to clean the stomach. Thank you. Yeah. All kinds of things. So I remember when I was younger, on, on Sundays especially, my mother yeah. would give me kodu, man, and I hated it. <laughs> and the only uh, only way that I would have it, I would like bargain, I would be like, listen, give me one spoon of sugar and I will down this. <laughs> it's still sold at Mapsa, you still yeah, get it. Yeah, I got this from Marga Market. Marga. How much? <laughs> 50 rupees. 50? He wants to check where it's <laughs> No, because I just want to see how the prices have escalated. How much? Earlier it used to be 5, 5, 10. Oh but this is like 10 years back. So, you know, it's becoming scarce. So, yeah. I think it's called Kiraita in Hindi. Yeah. What's it called? Yeah. In yeah. Hindi? In Hindi? Yeah. Kiraita, Kiraita also. Kiraite. Kiraite Chekur. Yeah. And we have this beautiful uh, poem by Dr. Manohar Rai Sardis, which I honestly feel you should read. Uh, it really talks about... I am the world wanderers. Yes, world we are the world wanderers. You know, so uh, this one, my theory, Amanda, my theory is that, uh, Wendy, that uh, this imagery of Goa is created in the diaspora, is created in Bollywood. The Goan and Goa is just busy leading Goa life. Is just leading. Yeah, that's yeah? true. So, that's true. It's, it's very strong in, in the diaspora, no? yeah, that kind of... Uh, very strong. Absence makes Agro founder nothing. That's true, and even Sabotsa, and even I felt that, like, but I've never taken Goa for granted. But there are different imaginations in different parts even, of the yeah, di different diasporas. That is true. So Bombay would be different from yeah. elsewhere. Canada would be different, UK would be different. Yeah. yeah but you know, it's, it's nice to see how it collectively comes together. I think uh, no one has done that job of, of synthesizing everything and explaining. Bringing the community yeah. under one platform and like, you know. Yeah. Or even trying to negotiate why certain things exist in some areas and not in others. Complex. Anyway, I'll just say thank you. Yeah, 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 please, please.